Today we're going to talk about how to install the TMC2208 on the Big Tree Tech Octopus version 1.1. Now there's a couple of things I need to explain on this board. Obviously they marked everything with motors 0 through 9 I think. But as you can see this is our X stepper, our Y stepper, our Z stepper, our E0 stepper, our E1 stepper our E2 stepper, our E3 stepper, and our E4 stepper. So these can vary for stepper types due to the configuration that you can make in Marlin, but I'm gonna only concentrate on the X stepper in this case, and then you can extrapolate how to use the other ones. So in this case, first thing that we need to understand is where the enable pin is so we can plug in our stepper correctly. And if you haven't noticed, on the stepper, there's a red and a black. That's usually a clue, but to confirm it, what we can do is we actually can zoom in on the actual stepper. And let me move this over a little bit for you. And as you can see, there's the EN for the enable pin. That is highly important for correctly configuring this. Now keep in mind the enable pin in each one of the steppers is located right here. So it's important that you actually know where it actually is. So I'm gonna show you another one right here and right here for enable pins. So once we have that understood, we know how to insert the stepper. So the next thing we need to do is actually go over to the manual to understand this. So I'm going to bring up the manual for you so you can see what I'm talking about. So inside the actual manual, what you'll see is how to configure UART mode. Now down here, there's jumpers. Now the jumpers we currently have are not in the correct order. We have to remove some. So I'll show you how to do that on the workbench right now. So on the workbench, let me just zoom out real quick here you can see that there's jumpers that are aligned right here that we need to take out. So I'm going to pop these out and we're going to leave the one for UART. There we go. Let me just get that out of the way. So now what we can do is actually insert the stepper with the correct coloring. So I'm going to place this over the actual port and push it down and notice how I have actual cooling fins on here that's kind of important in that you'll want to keep your stepper cool you'll also want to keep a fan on it just to keep it good the other thing we need now to do is actually configure our power supply now they have actual power for the motors up here and what I've done is I marked red for anything that's voltage so that we can keep track of these so we're gonna connect power and then power for the board. So we're gonna take the actual connectors that they gave us and we're actually gonna connect these in like so. So I'm gonna slide in the red, then I'm gonna tighten it down with the screwdriver, then I'm gonna slide in the actual ground over here and tighten that down as well. This is just so it can make it real safe. Next, we're going to do the same again, where we connect the red over here and tighten this down. And this is voltage, by the way. And this is for board power supply. So then we'll do the other one right here. And this is actually the logic of your board. So I'm going to close that for safety. The next thing I'm going to do is connect the actual DuPont connector. So I'm going to slide that in for the X axis. Next, we need to actually load the firmware. So I need to pop out the SD drive and connect it inside here, then place it inside my computer. Now you'll hear a beep in a moment. So we're gonna go over to actually use, um, pardon me, uh, VS Code to load this. So inside VS Code, I need to remind you that I've uh, talked about this in the initial basics tutorial, 
and there's another tutorial on how to load it that you can link to in there but I'm just gonna open up the downloaded Marlin that I put in my downloads folder then the second Marlin folder then I'm gonna say select folder now there's gonna be several things that we're gonna need to consider when doing this first is our default environment right now it's set for the mega 2560 which is a different chipset than we're using and Marlin has changed the way that you can find it you used to be able to search inside here now they've broken it out by sub files that you can select from so that's what these includes right here are for it's saying point to these folders so I'm going to minimize that for a moment and show you what's going on so inside the Marlin folder we're going to go to source core boards.h we're going to search on octopus we're going to find our board type which is the octopus version 1.1 we're going to copy that then we're going to close out of boards.h and before we actually go too far I also have to point out here is our actual chipset which is STM 32F4 that's going to be important in just a moment so I'm going to minimize this folder minimize the core or source folder excuse me then I'm going to go to configuration.h now many of you may not understand what version we're working with I just want to point this out it's 2.0.9.1 that's where you find the version so if you have a question remember which version you're on so I'm going to search on motherboard and I'm going to find the ramps right here which is the chipset we're not working with and paste ours over it next thing I need to do is actually go up to our first serial port and change this to negative one that'll allow us to actually communicate with the board later on also the baud rate is already default for us so we're going to stick with that now keep in mind there are other serial ports that they've now added but this is the one I like to use until they lock it down to something else so now that we're configured there we need to configure the stepper so I'm going to search on a 4988 and inside here you can see that the stepper driver type is already enabled for us if you're going to use other stepper stepper types you'd have to remove the comments but in this case the comments already removed so I'm going to copy the TMC 2208 I'm then going to paste it over the a4988 once that's complete I need to explain this a little bit to you these are the default values that Marlin came up with. They may vary according to printers. It's also used for calibration. So consult the RepRap calculator in order to dial in what your settings may be. So after we've got that configured, we have to go to configuration.h and we have to search on 800 to get us to where we need to be. And it might be a couple down so once we're over here you can see the stepper that we actually enabled is already able to be seen and inside here it says micro steps most of these values should be default for your stepper if you're using the TMC 2208 made by Big Tree Tech so now that we have this actually understood we need to understand one small thing if you want to increase the micro steps for instance you want to do 160 because you need to double it you also have to double the value right here from 16 to 32 otherwise your stepper may act funny the other thing that's important to realize which I'll show you in a moment is the actual power on the board the jumper needs to be removed when using TMC steppers and I'll show you that in just a second but there are other things we want to enable over here such as TMC debug so we're gonna remove the comment by pressing the control button in the slash and then we're going to search for the second one because there's two we need the G codes so I'm gonna click on this I'm going to remove the comment as well then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over to my default environment 
over here and we need to set this up so it can compile correctly. Now I did talk about the INIs a second ago so we need to find the STM32F INI. Then we have to search on Octopus. Once we found that we can copy our environment. We can close out of this and we can go back to our platform io.ini and paste it in. So now we have our default environment. We have to also consider that we need to clean our folder because it's set up with the Mega 2560 at the moment. So I'm gonna click on the little garbage can over here. That'll clean it out. Now I'll click on the build checkbox. Once this completes, if it completes, we should be able to use the firmware.bin. Now in this case, I came across an error. So I don't know exactly what the error is. So if I scan through here, I can't see what's occurring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit build again. Sometimes this occurs when building. If it happens more than two times, you may have to either clean it again or download it or go to the very first error that you encounter. But this is not an uncommon thing to see. So this is building pretty well. Once it's complete, what we're gonna have to do is go to the .pio folder and pull our firmware.bin out of here inside the build inside here. So that'll show up in just a moment because the build's going quite well. So you can see there's firmware.elf and now we have bin. So we're gonna right click on that. We're gonna go to reveal and file explorer. We're then going to right click again and we're gonna say send to the E drive. Now, as you can see on the E drive, we have firmware.bin that we just copied over. And then from the previous load earlier today, I have firmware.cur. Cur is not a cursor file. In this case, it's renamed to cur for current. If you wanted to reuse it, you'd rename it to firmware.bin and then reinsert it. And after it's finished loading, it would be renamed firmware.cur in uppercase letters. So let's go over to the computer for a second, or excuse me, the motherboard. I'm gonna pop out the drive. I'm going to take out the actual SD card, insert it into here. Now there's two ways to load. One would be direct power. The other one would be via USB because the jumper is currently right here. So in this case, I'm gonna load it via power. So I'm gonna remove the jumper. Then I'm gonna insert this so that we can control it later on. But now it's gonna function off our power supply. So I'm gonna grab the actual cord to our power supply in just a second. So now that we actually have the power supply connected and safely enclosed, I'm gonna power it up and it's going to flash for us. In a moment, you'll hear a beep that says that it's connected to the computer. And what we'll do now is we'll actually go over to Pronerface to see if this is working correctly. So inside Pronerface, as you can see, it's set to COM port one. Sometimes if you click the drop down, you'll see your USB, but I'll show you a method to actually find it real quick. So if you go over to device manager and there's multiple ways to get here, but I like to type device to get device manager. And once it comes up, you can actually go to ports and you can see that your COM port is nine. This one is default to the computer already. So I'm going to close that I'm going to check the drop down to see if it's there, which it is in this case, but you can always highlight it and then type it in here. The speed's correct, so I'm gonna click connect. Inside here, it says printer is now online. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to type M122 to see if it's functioning correctly. So as you can see here, it says testing is okay. That's because we have power from our power supply currently. Now there's various powers that you can use for this in the advanced configuration when doing other types of stepping. I'm not gonna go into that in this tutorial. I'm also not going to talk about inverting the direction of your stepper, but if you search on invert in configuration.h, you can find that information. 
This is just to get you up and running, then you can try various other things. So let's test this real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the x-axis 10 to see how it moves. And that moves about 10 millimeters correctly. Now I'm gonna move it back 10 millimeters. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.